Welcome dear students to this dermatology discussion of INI CET May 2, 2022. Now when we come to the dermatology questions which were there, there are a lot of overlaps this time. Many students found this to be moderate to tough exam when it comes to all the subjects. Dermatology was relatively simpler as compared to the other subjects. But there was a lot of overlap which meant that a question for example HPV vaccine. Now which subject does it go into? It goes into a lot of subjects. It goes into microbiology, it goes into a bit of dermatology, it also goes into PSM, goes into a bit of gynae because you look at a cervical cancer. So there's a lot of overlap which means a, a, a particular topic can be covered by many faculties, right? And there's a lot of overlap like that. For example, there was one question on the sclerotic body this time, which could be a micro question, which could be a derma question. With that kind of an overlap is what we do expect nowadays in the modern pattern of question asking which is going to be a correlation between multiple subjects not one subject limited but no kind of have a lot of overlap so we are going to look at dermatology questions let's look at the first one all right a patient with satellite lesions now the moment you say satellites we have discussed this in the class so many times now typically the satellite is seen in leprosy Lep is a classical disease for satellites, right? And we understand that the classical disease which causes the satellite in leprosy is BT leprosy, BT Hansen, right? It presents, he presents to you. He also has one hypopigmented lesion. So there's going to be a lesion which is, which says it is hypopigmented plus there's, it seems a satellite, right? So there's a hypopigmented lesion and a satellite, right? And one thickened nerve. So a single thicken nerve right that is what the question says okay it also said feeder nerve possibly though see there's going to be sometimes some student might say no the feeder was not written but that's okay the essence of the question remains the same one lesion satellite and a thickened nerve right now this is what we need you to look at now let's look at the discussion now we look at a bt hansen right you're looking at a hypopigmented patch you're looking at a nerve a single nerve right that is what the question said and the question is asking you the treatment in the treatment they gave you two packets one the green packet one is the red packet so let's call this packet a let's call this packet b now the question is packet a for 12 months packet b for 12 months packet a for six months packet b for six months now let's look at and evaluate this question now when we look at all treatment for hansen's it's always going to be divided under a pbmb category we never treat Hansen as we discussed in the class also on a TT and a BT and a BB and a BL and an LL spectrum. It is always a PB and an MB spectrum. In a PB, the number of skin lesions usually is between 1 and 5. And when it comes to nerve, we discuss this in class also, it is usually 1. Single thicker nerve. Okay. MB is when you have more than 5 patches and you have more than 1 thicker nerve. So now that itself tells you that we are looking at a PB spectrum, we're looking at a PB spectrum in this question. Posse bacillary leprosy. Now, for posse bacillary leprosy, we obviously give multi drug therapy, posse bacillary. Now, earlier we used to have a green packet and a red packet. Now it's all only a red packet. Red packet has rifampicin, clofazimine, and dapsone. Rifampicin, clofazimine, and dapsone. And in PB, we want to give it for six months. For MB, you want to give it for 12 months. So the answer straight away is an MDD packet, posse bacillary. So it looks like this now. This is the packet that you want to give, the packet B, right? Because that is what is given for every leprosy nowadays. Earlier, we used to give a green packet, but that was earlier. Now it's only a red packet. And because it's PB, we will say, okay, sorry, not this. Packet B for six months. So MDT packet, multi-drug therapy packet containing three drugs, but six months therapy, not 12 months. Big we are looking at a bossy bacillary hand sensor, right? I hope this is clear now to all of you, right? Okay. There was a match the column option as well. Match the options in column A with the correct options in column B. This was the lesion on scale. This was a lesion on scale. What is a scale? We discuss this again so many times in class. Scale is a visible falling of skin, a visible exfoliation, so to speak, of skin. So silvery scale, typically it is seen in psoriasis. So we'll say this goes to psoriasis. Now I'm sure all, all of you know this 
it's not a very big information all of you know this by heart silvery scales and psoriasis brani also called as powdery scales are is seen in petraeus versicolor again we discussed this in class fine like what is bran okay bran is like that husk out of an on, on outer covering of a wheat kernel you have a little bit of this powdery stuff right so it can be called powdery it can be called bran you know a lot of people in their food have bran bran as fiber and cellulose we know that right so bran is an outer cover so brani powdery sometimes we even call it furfuraceous because it is caused by malaria furfur furfuraceous powdery brani all of them fine scales all of them mean the same thing so we can call this brani we can call this powdery we can call this fine we can call this furfuraceous all these are words you should describe it as a versicolor now mica like now mica like is seen in a disease called as petraeus lichenoids chronica now plc is a short form for this petraeus lichenoids chronica now plc is a very chronic disease where you get a lot of papules plus scales covering those small papules covering the papules and these scales are described as mica mica like okay it's a very specific term very thin mica like scales for petraeus lichenoids it's a very chronic disease seen many time in children lot of small itchy papules will come leaving a bit leaving behind a bit of hypopigmentation that's called plc colored scales would be seen in petraeus rosea colored scale means collar and et means a lot of edge scale okay et means small so small scale like a collar okay on the edge of a lesion so if this is a lesion of petraeus rosea which is a viral infection you get a bit of a scale on the edge a bit of a scale on the edge this edge scale is called collaret scales typically seen on the mother lesion or a herald patch of petraeus rosea typically on the trunk and that is the the question here in this the mica like scale was a bit unusual okay but the rest ones are the standard question that were that are usually asked right okay now again this is kind of an overlap with psm but okay i i want to deal with it right here as well for starting chemotherapy chemo prophylaxis rather in leprosy which requirements conditions should be met now this was multiple choice as was reported by students now what is chemo prophylaxis okay now chemo prophylaxis is if i have a person who in my family has leprosy how do i prevent okay uh, what, what condition should be met okay for chemo prophylaxis what is chemo prophylaxis i have to give some drug to the contact and that drug is single dose rifampicin single dose rifampicin okay single dose rifampicin we call it sdr single dose rifampicin is given to contacts okay now what is a criteria to select those contacts for example let's say the boss the the male of the house the husband of the house has leprosy right should the car driver get chemo prophylaxis because he's obviously working for his Uh, for his boss right he ferries him to one or the two places right so the concept question is who gets prophylaxis okay is what is the question right multiple choice so age should be more than 2 years yes that is a very well established criteria people around that person okay who are in close contact with that person who whose age is more than 2 years should be getting a single dose of rifampicin right now living with the patient for more than 6 months close contact for more than 20 hours per week and sharing same clothes now these are this these are who guidelines for chemo prophylaxis of leprosy okay in this close contact for more than 20 hours per week is one of the established criteria so if you have a contact with that person for for example that driver let's assume is ferrying that boss from one place to other other and he believes that okay i take him six times in a week to to the office and i spend about 3 hours in a day with him traveling so that's almost like 20 hours kind of a thing so that is how the calculation is usually 
done if sharing of the same clothes and towels now this is kind of uh, thought though never proven really but kind of thought to be one of the ways it can happen so sharing of these personal clothings can also be one way of transmitting the leprosy so all this so a c and d would be eligible for chemo prophylaxis of leprosy right and that will be single dose rifampicin all right Next question, a pregnant female had type 2 lepra reaction. There's a lot of focus on leprosy uh, actually. Best treatment for her would be. Now, when you have an ENL in a pregnant female, in a pregnant female, thalidomide is obviously out of question. Thalidomide is what you would never even dream of. Even if somebody is potentially going to become pregnant, still you would not give, give. forget about giving it in pregnancy. Azathioprine also would not be given in pregnancy. These are out of question. So the only two things you have to decide is you obviously have to give steroid because steroids are the drug of choice for ENLs. Now the question is, should you just add steroids to the to the MDT regimen or should you stop MDT and give steroid? The answer is you have to just add steroids. Do not stop MDT. It's very important. MDT is not stopped ever because MDT continues to kill the organism. That's very important. You don't benefit the patient by stopping the main therapy of MDT. Continue that. Just add a bit of uh, immunosuppressor steroid there, right? And that's an important drug to be given. Best treatment would be steroids, addition of steroids, all right? Okay, a forest worker has a history of what year we discussed this so many times in class all my classes has this question almost with a similar image also I give you in, in, in the in the class a forest worker we so this would be a barefoot possibly a barefoot worker right has a history of what cauliflower mass we always mention we even draw this in the class cauliflower mass on the foot is chromo if you remember the chromoblastomycosis we discuss this in class all the time right chromoblastomycosis after a thorn prick his histology is what is mentioned now these are the yellow brown bodies that we do mention and these are we name them as sclerotic bodies okay we name them as sclerotic bodies again overlap with microbiology but we have covered this in the so as i said there's going to be a lot of overlap for example that leprosy chemo prophylaxis could be deemed to be a prevention psm question but that's okay doesn't really matter we can discuss it as well so what is this splendor hopley phenomenon these are nothing but the uh, asteroid bodies okay which are these uh, radiating spicules like this eosinophilic radiating spicules with some fungal elements in the center right that's called an asteroid body or splendor hopley phenomena where these radiating clubs are there of eosinophilic radiating clubs with a center lesion center area of a bit of fungi or bacteria so this is basically going to be seen with sporotrichosis okay so this question is obviously not sporotrichosis because you have mentioned a warty cauliflower like sporotrichosis would be something along the lymphatic territory on the lower limb right okay so answer for this would be the straightforward sclerotic body question number six a patient has lesions as shown patient mentioned that a spider crawled in that area while sleeping the diagnosis now a lot of students actually made a mistake here because they just thought oh a spider is there so let's just call it some allergic or some irritant dermatitis now this is just a, a way to fool the one who's reading it so don't go by that the lesion did show something along a dermatome Okay, it was unilateral an image on the chest. This is a common, we have discussed this in the class also. Thoracic area is the commonest dermatome and you have like usually a, some students said it was a 60 year old patient. I'm not so sure. So, but it was there. If it was there, that's even more uh, suggestive because old people tend to get more herpes zoster, which is the answer. So, it's a dermatomal vesicle, grouped vesicles due, due to immunosuppression and that is usually herpes zoster, reactivation of obviously a varicella why do you not call it irritant and allergic contact dermatitis because you would not get it in a dermatome right plus you there will not be an old person in the question all this is see, see the patient see patient doesn't know herpes zoster actually patient does say that ki doctor sir aisa lagta hai kuch kaat gaya but when they you know they think it's something of a bite because that for them is more commoner but as a doctor you should not be fooled by that history you have to ignore that history and say oh this is not like a bite thing it's basically reactivation of a childhood varicella that you would have got and now because of immunosuppression it's actually coming out right 
And now this was again like kind of an overlap thing with rheumatology this time, connected tissue disease, but still I thought I'll cover it. A 10 year old presents with arthritis of the knee and lesion on the hand as shown. Now the lesions here are Gautron's papule. Okay. These are voilaceous. Okay. We call it voilaceous plus red. The color is a combination of a bit of voilage or we even call it lilac color plus a bit of red color typically on the interphalangeal joint and metacarpophalangeal joint okay this is a sign of dermatomyositis along with Gottron's papule along with Gottron's papule you would also get a heliotrope rash which is a rash typically around the eyes typically around the eyes okay again the color would be same voilaceous and red okay there would be a bit of photosensitivity also a bit of photosensitivity also now SLE would be I'll just show you in black SLE would be a rash here so this would be an SLE rash on the cheeks and a bit maybe on the nose but if it's around the eyes then you took think of dermatomyositis so that is an important thing an SLE rash is usually on the cheek right and a dermatomyositis rash is usually around the eyes. Along with that, you also get something called a shawl sign, which is again that same photosensitive erythema on the upper back, like in the outer arms, they do take a shawl, the shawl distribution. Along with that, they also have a lot of proximal muscle weaknesses. That's why the myositis would be mentioned. So they would have trouble in, you know, kind of lifting their hand upwards that's the proximal muscle or climbing stairs because the thigh muscle and the hip muscles are getting used again that would not be possible so proximal but they can hold up the hold a pen because that's a distal muscle distal muscle is readily okay proximal muscle weakness tenderness is what you would get myositis and that would be the rash so in this you would obviously say gotrans papulin juvenile like juvenile because obviously the area the, the age is 10 years so this would be a gotrans Papulized only as not possible in SLE. Sclerodactyly would be a feature of scleroderma. Dactyly means the finger, the finger becomes very tapered and thin. Dactyl has sclerosis. Means the finger has sclerosis. That's a sign of scleroderma. So in this, this is going to be a classical dermatomyositis rash in this child, right? So with this, we finish all our seven questions. Uh, uh, as I said, dermatology was not that tough to predict, okay? But as you see, there's a lot of overlap, which is what uh, increasingly the questions are being coming like that. A lot of correlation between subjects. Some, you know, there's not, even if a patient comes to me in my OPD, is he saying, okay, I'm a derma patient? No, he might have some other medical signs, some fever would be there, some rash would be there, some liver enzymes raised. So even as a doctor in a dermatology clinic, I have to correlate many subjects, right? So that's the real life scenario. And that is what these questions are trying to reduplicate. They're giving you real life situations because that is how the patient presents, not system wise, right? Patient is, is, is like a full human he has so many organs getting involved at the same time and these questions are trying to mimic that situation right okay so with this we are through with our questions best of luck take care